guys, it's Victine Gamer here, and well, I have to get this video done as soon as possible. So, uh, well, no dilly dallying. Baiju is here. Yep, Baiju's here. So you know what that means? Showcase time, baby. So yeah, uh, we're gonna be showcasing Baiju in a bunch of things. So yeah, if you already know how these showcase videos go. Then you know the drill. If you don't, then watch my previous showcase video. So, without any further ado, let's just go to my Baiju build. So, surprisingly enough, Baiju is actually one of the easiest characters to build in the game. I am not joking, because all you need for Baiju to function is basically give him HP and give him ER. That is all you need, because HP scales his healing. And ER gives him his burst faster. So yeah, um, that is his bread and butter, is his elemental skill and his elemental burst to heal his party members. He is also a dendro applicator if you want him to be a main DPS, but um, you're only using Baiju to heal. So yeah, um, if you are going to be using him to do damage, then uh, I guess... You can use him until you get another good Dendro applicator. So yeah, if Baiju is your only Dendro character, then you can make him a main DPS by making him a main Dendro applicator. But other than that, his role is strictly meant to be support, aka the healer. So yeah. Well, anyways, here's my Baiju build. As you see here, 40k HP with some good ER. Yep, um, your typical basic Baiju build. I mean, there's no other, um, well build you could run them hit with unless you are going to be using a main applicator um baiju then if you are going to be doing that then you should level up his em but um his passive talent scales off of hp which i think is this one yeah for each max hp you basically increase the um damage of dendro reactions so yeah it is really really um good to give him hp over em if you are going to be running a main applicator uh, Baiju. But um, since he is just mainly strictly support for me, I just gave him max HP with uh, ER. So yeah. As for weapon, I gave him the prototype Amber. This is literally a weapon you can craft on the uh, crafting bench. Pretty easy. I mean, well, uh, well, by crafting bench, um, I quote unquote uh, the forge. So yeah, just forge the weapon and then you basically could get a free R5 prototype Amber. So yeah. Um, it is a really good free-to-play weapon, gives him a lot of max HP, as you see there, 41% max HP for R5, which is pretty good, uh, R5 will 90, and also the passive is not really that bad either, because when you use elemental burst, you get energy back, and also you can regenerate your HP back as well, so yeah, so Baiju basically won't die with this weapon. You can also give him other free-to-play weapons as well, like Fafonius Codex, that is a ER weapon, which is pretty good. But um, the only downside for Favonius Codex is that you have to give him crit rate in order to give him, well, ER back. So yeah. But um, other than that, his other main weapon, which is his uh, banner weapon, is also a pretty good weapon on him as well. So um, if you want to give him his banner weapon, you can give him that, which is his best weapon. But for the best free-to-play weapon, it is Prototype Amber, hands down. Or if you are a, uh, if you want to give him another thing, you can also give him a magic guide, which is also pretty good too. Uh, his artifact set, I gave him Deepwood Memories. I use him on a uh, Nouvellet team, so that is why I give him Deepwood Memories. If Baiju is going to be your main Dendro applicator on most of your teams, then you give him Deepwood. Um, if not, then you can give him Gilded Dreams. Um, it really doesn't matter what you give him. You can even give him the Bleece to basically increase attack for party members. If you are going to be doing that, then you as well, you should give him um, well, Magic Guide or a Thrilling Tales. Um, Thrilling Tales basically increases your attack if you switch out of um, the party, which is pretty good. And Doblis, well, basically gives you an attack um, boost if you are going to be using your burst. So yeah, um, Thrilling Tales with... Um, Thrilling Tales with Noblesse is pretty good as well if you want to give him maximum support. But since I am going to be using him in Dendro teams a lot, I give him Deep One Memories. So yeah, it um, really doesn't matter what artifacts that you give him as long as you give him HP% percent and ER and he'll uh, function really fine. As for constellations, I have him at C0. He's one of the few characters who doesn't need um, constellations to be good. After all, his main purpose is to heal. If you want to give him, I guess, more healing, then you can give him um, C1, which basically gives him double E. So you're basically going to be healing twice and getting particles twice, which is pretty good. 
Um, but uh, you don't really need it. Um, so yeah, uh, Baijiu uh, doesn't really need constellations to be good. So yeah. And as for Talos, I have six, six, seven. Yes, I'm currently leveling this up. This is pretty good. If you are going to be leveling Baiju's talents up, then level up his burst and skill. It really doesn't matter what you level up first because both of them are really good in their own right. So yeah. Um, so that is my Baiju build. I mean, it's pretty basic. Deep one memories, HP percent, um, ER with deep one memories, uh, zero constellations, and minimal talents. So yeah. Well. Um, since Baiju doesn't really have that many teams besides Dendro teams and a couple other um, teams that don't involve Dendro, um, I'll be just showcasing them. It'll probably be like around seven or eight teams that he has. He's not really used in that many teams, but in the teams that he is in, he is a extremely good team player. So yeah. Well, anyways, it's time to hop on Spiral Abyss and showcase the teams. Alright, so here we are in Spiral Bus 412. The reason why I have him at 412 is to showcase how much power he has, aka how much healing he can produce. Because 412 have some has like some of the hardest hitting enemies in the game. So yeah, um, if you are going to be fighting 412, might as well bring a good healer, right? And that is what Baishu is here for. So yeah. But um as always for these uh well, these Spiral Abyss showcases in the uh, showcase video. I have to choose a buff that basically doesn't um, buff the uh, main showcase E, which is Baiju in this case, that much. So I'm going to be choosing this because Baiju doesn't use defense percent. So yeah, this is going to be a, well, a non-factor um, because I want to showcase everyone in their raw stats. So yeah. Well, anyways, here it is. Um, here's the first team I'm going to be showcasing here which is the Nuvalet Hyper Carry team. Um, this is one of Baiju's most um, frequently ran teams because, uh, well, Baiju heals the party, Nuvalet does all the damage for you, Kaza Hub um, gives you a lot of uh, particles as well. Yeah, it is a really good team. Um, if your team members uh, run low, then you can just use Baiju E or Baiju Q to heal them up, as you see there. I mean, look at that. Um, the... Bloom cores also do pretty good damage as well because it is paired with Hydro. So, you, of course, you can get the Bloom reaction. But yeah, um, there is one of the uh, teams that Baiju's in, which is the Nuvalet Hyper Carry team. Yeah, I, as you see there, um, whatever team Baiju's on, um, well, specifically uh, the uh, teams that are frequently ran, Baiju's pretty good, as you see there. So, uh, well, with that uh, drilled into your brain, might as well go through, well, his catalog of other teams, which are mainly Dendro-based teams. So, yeah. Well, anyways, let's just go over them and showcase Baiju's power even more. Alright, so next up, we have a Quicken slash Aggravate team. So, yeah. Um, as you already know, these teams are extremely overpowered for a good reason. And that's because they do a bajillion damage because of Dendro Reaction. So, yeah. This is uh, this is going to be a complete and utter massacre. So, uh, let's just set everything up here. Let's do Triple E with uh, Yaimiko. Um, let's stay on Baishu for a minute so you can get the burst back. There we go. And let's get uh, right in burst back. And yeah, as you see there, look at that damage. Look at that damage. Absolutely ridiculous, as you see there. And Baishu is there to heal as well, just in case, uh, well, we take a lot of damage. So yeah. So there is the Quick and Aggravate team. That's just one of the few Dendro teams that you can run. Of course, for every uh, Quick and Aggravate team, you can exchange uh, Electro and Dendro characters. You can have Alhatham be the main DPS. Or, well, in my case, you can have Raiden be the main DPS. It really doesn't matter as long as you uh, have a double uh, Electro, double uh, Dendro. Or you can do a uh, triple Electro, one Dendro, or triple Dendro, one Electro. But yeah, um, as you see there, Baiju performs really well in an aggravate team regardless. So yeah. Well, anyways, it's time to move on to the next Dendro team that we're going to be showcasing. All right, so here is another overpowered team, which is the Hyper Bloom team. So, uh, well, everyone already knows how good the Hyper Bloom team is because it's literally one of the most uh, ran teams in the entire game. Um, of course, your main uh, characters will be a Hydro, Electro, and Dendro character. Um, Hydro and uh, 
Dendro, of course, for the blooms. And then you can have the Electro character hit the blooms to do Hyper Bloom damage. But as you see there, I mean, we literally just made quick work. We steamrolled through that, and they dead. They're just dead. Uh, there's, like, no other thing uh, out there that could resist that. So, yeah. Um, Hyper Bloom, of course, is probably one of the best teams in the game for single target enemies because all the uh, blooms will attack the one enemy which does way too much damage for its own good i don't know why um that's the case but hyper bloom is just op so yeah but as you see there uh baiju works pretty well on a hyper bloom team um his healing his dendro application yeah you already get the drill baiju's already just good so i don't have to dwell on that any longer since you already saw well three teams that are basically pretty good with baiju so let's just keep going um here is another uh dendro team that uses baiju all right next up we have a bergen team not really as used as much as well let's say a hyper bloom team or a quick and aggravate team but it's still pretty good because bergen does a lot of damage so yeah um, we're gonna have Nahida here as our main Dendro Applicator, even though he, she is kind of squishy. But, um, if she does, uh, become really low, uh, which is right now, we can just switch over to another character. So yeah, not really that big of a deal, to be honest. Alright, um, let's apply everything back. Um, let's put, uh, let's put Nahida's Q back up. And we can have, uh, Nahida do her damage here. Um... Yeah, but as you see there, I mean, look at that. Bergen damage, OP, as you see there. Um, we also have a ton of shielders as well as uh, little characters that basically uh, have interruption resistance, like Xing Cho with his uh, Guha swords. So yeah, pretty good overall. I mean, even though it is taking me a bit longer than it should to defeat these enemies, um, it still does pretty good damage, as you see there. It's just that... Uh, the Mangu Kenkis love to attack a lot, so yeah, um, it really doesn't give me a chance to breathe at all. Alright, let's just uh, get everything back up here. This should give me uh well, oh, never mind, it does not give me Toma's Burst back. I guess we could just do some normal Bloom reactions. There we go. Let's do, there we go, Bergen, and now we'll just do some Bergen reactions. Yeah, there we go. Pretty good uh, overall. Um, I didn't choose the best uh, main DPS there, but if I did have El Haytham, then of course it'll probably do like a bajillion damage. So yeah. But there is another Dendro team that you can use, Bergen, um, if you don't have Quicken or Quicken Aggravate or Hyper Bloom. Uh, Bergen is just fine. So yeah. Well, here's another team that you can use um, that is very character specific. Uh, and I mean very character specific. You'll see what I mean. Oh boy. The team that fell from grace, but is still pretty good, to be honest. And that is the Nilu Bloom team. So yeah, um, this is a team that's not really used as often as it was uh, since it first released, with uh, Nilu releasing, I think, in, uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, 3.1. I'm pretty sure she got released at, in 3.1. But um, it's still a pretty good team, um, to be honest. Uh, Nilo Bloom just does a lot of damage as you see there. 30k per Bloom. Um, you, your eyes did not um, deceive you. That is 30k on Bloom. 56k on Bloom as you see there. So yeah, pretty good um, team to be honest. Uh, it, it's super, super good. Um, especially since um, if a enemy is not, uh, well, it doesn't have shields or whatnot, or doesn't have any special resistances, Nilo Bloom team can basically get the job done. So yeah, pretty good team overall. Um, still one of the best teams ever. So yeah, um, well, uh, there is the majority of the uh, Dendro teams that I can uh, showcase. There is another Dendro team that I can showcase, but it is its own subcategory. But I'll showcase it anyway. So here is another Dendro team for you guys. So this is Hyper Fridge. The only reason why I haven't shown Fridge, if you don't know what the Fridge team is, it's basically Electro Hydro Dendro, which basically uh, takes advantage of the Frozen state, as well as uh, take advantage of Quicken and Aggravate. Um, the only reason why I haven't showcased yet is because, uh, well, I don't have that many um, good Dendro uh, DPSs. Um, as well as uh, 
Zentral DPS is like I'll hate them is really good on a uh, fridge team. But since I don't have um, I'll hate them, I can showcase the hyper fridge team, which is the second best, I think, team. Because, uh, well, for a fridge team, you basically have a free slot for any element of your choice. So it could be Cryo or Dendro or Electro. But for um, hyper fridge teams, you don't have that luxury. You're forced to run one Electro, one Hydro, one Cryo, and one Dendro for hyper fridge. But yeah, um, it's only really good if you are fighting a crowd of enemies, which is basically not bosses because bosses, of course, can't be frozen. But um, I brought Diona here, which is which she is pretty good because um, her C6 basically gives you a flat 200 EM. Um, as you see there, I'm taking a full advantage of that if uh, you have more than 50% HP. So yeah, it's pretty good. So yeah, um, there is the Hyper Fridge team. Pretty good uh, Dendro team. Um, I know it is not a Dendro reaction, but Hyper Fridge and Fridge um, teams in general are pretty fun to run. So yeah, there is a, a team, a wacky team for you guys to run. So yeah. Well, anyways... Um, I'm pretty sure that's every single team that I can showcase, so let's close it off with a free-to-play team to showcase. Alright, so here is a free-to-play Hyper Bloom team. So yeah, Hyper Bloom is pretty good, so it doesn't really need that much help to uh, basically make it extremely good. So yeah, we have Kaveh here as the main Dendro Applicator, um, who is pretty good. I see their 23k on uh, Dendro Application. Pretty good, to be honest, um, especially for a 4-star. Of his caliber. So yeah. Um, of course he's not going to be as good as I'll hate them. Of course. Because he's a 4 star. But um, he's still pretty good regardless. I don't even have him C6 and he's performing fine. So yeah. Alright. Let's reapply everything. Let's get uh, Shinobu out. Um, I'm just waiting for her E. Or her elemental skill to reset. There we go. Alright. Now let's do some normal attacks. Um, Kabe's normals are actually pretty fast, uh, to be honest, so I can just stay on him for a little while longer. But, yeah. Um, the only b downside about this team, I guess, is it doesn't really have that much AoE potential, because, of course, it's a Hyper Bloom team. Uh, Hyper Blooms only focus on one target that is the nearest to them, I'm pretty sure. Um, that's how the mechanic works. But, still pretty good, uh, regardless. So, yeah. Um, alright. So, they're all gathered together, so I'm pretty sure the Blooms could hit them. Um, let's do Shinobu E, do some big damage right there. Yeah, but as you see there, it's pretty good. Uh, I mean, look at that. Damage up the wazoo. And plus, we get a lot of bursts back anyway because of the elemental particles we get. Thanks to, well, our Hyper Bloom team. So yeah, it's pretty good. Alright, we're gonna get our burst back right there. I'm pretty sure the Cryo one's dead. Yep, now we can focus on the main uh, Mangu Kenki. Alright, let's do burst. Let's do E. Let's reset everything back. Alright. Burst back. Burst back. And then let's get Kave in here. So he can get his dendro particles back. Alright, there we go. Let's reapply the uh, E right there. I think we should be close to getting his burst. Yeah, there it is. We are pretty close. Come on. <laughs> this is kind of taking forever because I don't have Kave, um, well, optimally built at least. All right, let's do this. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, um, if you do have your Kave properly built, then he's probably gonna output bigger numbers than I ever would. So yeah, um, keep that in mind because my Kave uh, is basically minimally built. So yeah. Well, anyways, there is uh, well, Baiju's teams. Pretty cool, right? I mean, he works basically on every single Dendro team that you could possibly imagine, and also other off-brand um, teams that he can fit in too, like Nouvellet Hyper Carry, and uh, well, a Fridge and Hyper Fridge team. So yeah, um, well, that is it for the uh, team showcases. Now it's time to showcase Baiju and bosses. And since Baiju is from Liwe, we're going to be showcasing him in Liwe bosses. So yeah, well, first off, we're going to be showcasing him against the child fight. So let's just go there. All right, so here we are in the golden house where child's domain is. So um, of course, I am going to be uh, choosing a couple teams 
us uh, to showcase here. So the first team I'm going to be showcasing, I am not going to be showcasing the Hyper Bloom team, surprisingly. I'm going to be showcasing the Burning team. Yes, the Burning team, aka the team that no one runs. So yeah, um, I'm going to be going for these two characters. So Arlen Kino and Baiju. I want to showcase that Baiju could carry on his own um, just based on Dendro application. So yeah, and plus child's easy. So yeah, handicapping myself would be pretty good. All right, let's just uh, get our main dendro application working right there. All right, now let's do uh, some pretty good burning damage. Yeah, but yeah, as you see there, kablam, pretty good. All right, let's do burst right here so we can reset Arlen Kinos. Um, Elemental application and there we go. There's child's first phase done pretty easy, right? But yeah, as you see there um, Baishu is pretty good at de uh, Dendro applicating even if he is the only Dendro applicator in the team because his E and his Q just do a lot of uh, Or have a lot of active uh, frames where it's able to uh, put out a hitbox um, As you see there, we'll, we'll use this E. Look at how long that lasts. Yeah, look at how long that lasts. It's pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, as you see there, uh, Baishu is pretty good as a Dendro applicator, even if there's only one character in the team. So yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, there is the child uh, boss fight. Pretty easy, to be honest. I mean, well, it is. Uh, it did get released in like version 1.1. So yeah. So, uh, well, it's time to move on to the next Liwa boss, which is Astaha. All right, here we are in the Astaha domain. So... I am going to be using a Nouvellet team for this. So yeah, um, well, specifically, if you're in case your Nouvellet is C0, of course, you can still take advantage of uh, Baiju. So yeah, um, so we're going to have uh, Nouvellet. We'll have Zhongli right there. Um, and then for our last member, it could either be Farina or it could be Kazuha. Um, but I will choose Farina since she probably is going to be um, the next character to be in the uh, version um, 4.7 banners. So yeah, so this is going to be the team we're going to be rocking and let's just get started. So yeah, um, this team can work if you have Nouvellet C0 because Nouvellet doesn't get interruption resistance if he is at C0. He only gets interruption resistance if you have him at C1. So remember that. So yeah, well, let's just defeat as to her as fast as possible um before we get on to uh well the last boss fight of this video so yeah well anyways we're gonna be of course setting up here um let's get uh some dendro application in right there all right let's do eq i'm pretty sure he's gonna go into the second phase yeah there it is yeah we can just run away no need to engage all right, second phase, which is Pyro, um, and then his third phase will be Electro. Um, you can tell uh, what elements he'll be based on what the element, uh, the door says. So yeah, um, pro tip for you guys. Uh, all right, let's get um, some particles in. We need a lot of particles here. All right, there we go. Um, that is the... Uh, that's the second phase done. So yeah, as you see there, um, Nouvellet works pretty well um, with Zhongli at C0. Just because the shield protects him a lot, meaning that he won't be staggered. So it's pretty cool. Alright, third phase. Oh boy. So this phase uh, is pretty easy, at least the Electro one, compared to the Cryo one. For the Cryo one, you're constantly running around. Um, for this phase, he's stationary, so you can't just hit him um, for free. All right, let's do this. Let's do Q. We're going to be avoiding that attack. All right. Let's do uh, elemental. Uh, well, let's do charge attack right there. Pretty easy. So yeah, um, right there. That's the end of the Asaha fight because he's literally at one HP. So one hit. There we go. He's dead. <laughs> so yeah, um, as you see there, uh, Baiju is pretty good. Um, on a Nouvellet hyper carry team, even if Nouvellet's at C0. So yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> well, anyways, since Baiju can't really do max damage since he is a support, I'm going to be showcasing 
a really fast run with him. So yeah, a pretty powerful team that will basically blitz through a boss. So yeah, and what boss? Raiden Shogun, who basically, if you do not defeat in time, will go to her second phase. So I'm going to be showcasing that Baiju on a certain team or certain teams can basically beat Raiden in like one shot, basically first phasing it. So yeah, well, anyways, let's move on to the Raiden domain and showcase, well, Baiju's power. Alright, so here we are at the Raiden Domain. So as I said before, Baiju can't really do max damage output because I made him a support. So the second best thing I could do is basically speedrun a domain. So yeah. Well, we basically have a team right here who literally excels at single target enemies, which is the Hyper Bloom team. So yeah, it, it's it's pretty good. So of course we have Raiden Shogun as our main DPS. We have Nahida because she is Nahida. A dendro applicator and we have farina here to basically buff our damage on burst so yeah and baiju's here because it's baiju um just in case uh we take a lot of damage he heals for us and besides we also get the double dendro bonus so yeah well anyways let's defeat her as fast as possible so let's just apply everything right here let's do e let's do baiju thingy right there let's get our burst back and let's do a bajillion damage. So yeah, um, this is going to be a race uh, towards the clock. But yeah, but as you see there, does pretty good damage. Um, now we can finally use our bursts here. Kablam! Um, okay, the real one is this one. All right, and then let's finish it off with a uh, right in burst. Kablam! There we go. So yeah, as you see there, uh, we can phase one um, the Raiden Shogun with uh, Baiju uh, on our side. So yeah, so yeah, um, there is the power of the Hyper Bloom team as you see there. Um, as long as you're able to do a ton of damage, uh, you can basically just one phase Raiden. So yeah, well, there is the uh, boss showcases. So now it's time to move on to, well, Baiju's. Final thoughts. So yeah, let's just go to Baiju's screen and I'll basically read his talents out. All right, here we have Baiju, the owner of Boo Boo Pharmacy, AKA Chi Chi's caretaker, AKA, uh, well, the guy who has a pet snake named Cheng Xiong. So yeah, well, anyways, uh, of course I'm gonna be uh, explaining his talents and constellations and giving my final thoughts. But if you guys have been astute, you probably know my opinion on Baiju. If you don't, well, stick around till the end. So yeah. Well, anyways, here are his talents. So his normal attack, the classics of acupuncture, which does four normal attacks, and it is not good. <laughs> this is only good if Baiju is your main applicator. If he is not, which is most of the time because he is a supporter, uh, well, he's not. It's just not gonna do any favors for you. Um. Honestly, level this up last. You don't really need the normal attacks unless he is your only dendro character who could do a uh, dendro application. So yeah. As for his E, we have universal diagnosis. So in this um, elemental skill, he basically uh, throws Cheng Sheng at the enemy and Cheng Sheng does three attacks. After that, uh, Cheng Sheng comes back to him and he heals based on his max HP, which is pretty good. It heals the whole party. So yeah, unlike um, other characters who only heal themselves, like Barbara, or um, I'm pretty sure another character who could heal themselves is uh, Dory. So yeah, um, instead of single target healing, he does AoE healing, which is pretty good. Um, especially on Dendro teams where you need the AoE heals, um, as well as uh, Farina teams where, of course, you need the AoE heals because she drains the party on HP. So yeah, it is a pretty good elemental skill. And his burst is basically the same thing. So... He basically creates a shield, and then um, it'll regenerate every 2.5 seconds. So every 2.5 seconds, basically the shield just does damage, and then the shield comes back to him. Also, it's able to do dendro damage, as I said before, um, and it's able to, well, if you have it high enough level, able to basically take a lot of damage. So yeah, it's pretty good. And it's also based off his max HP, so the more max HP you have, the higher your shield's um, duration will be, aka how many hits it could take. So yeah, it's pretty good. So yeah, um, it basically heals every time it does damage, 
just like his elemental skill. And it heals for AoE. So yeah, it is really, really good. Um, it, as for what to level up first, I would say level up his burst first because that'll be your main bread and butter. And then the second that, um, skill that you can level up, of course, is his elemental skill. But um, it can be interchangeable. You can uh, level up his E first before you level up his Q, or you level up his Q first before you level up his E. Either way, both of these are extremely valuable to his kit. So level these bo um, both. Um, that is all I'm trying to say. So yeah. And as for his passive talents, his first one is Five Fortunes Forever, which basically... Um, Gives you different effects based on your current max HP on which character you are. So basically, it's character dependent on HP. So when you have less than 50% HP, Baiju gets 20% healing bonus, meaning that you're able to heal a ton of uh, damage, which is uh, pretty cool. And when your HP is equal or more than 50%, then Baiju gains 25% dendro damage bonus, which is pretty good. It means that he's able to basically support on the field by healing or um, if you have high enough HP, Dendro damage. So basically, you're able to be doing uh, Dendro application, able to do a lot of Dendro damage. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's a win-win. <laughs> and uh, his last passive talent, um, before his overworld passive talent, all things are of the earth. Basically, for each um, 1,000 uh, max HP that Baiju uh, possesses that does not exceed 50,000. So remember, 50,000 is his limit. You basically increase the uh, well dendro applications on uh, dendro cores by two percent, and for quicken and aggravate or spread, you're basically increasing the uh, damage bonus by zero point eight percent. So yeah, um, depending on how much HP your Baiju has, you're able to do a ton of damage. So yeah, that is why he's a support because of this passive talent right here. So the more max HP you have, the higher your support value is. Basically able to do a ton of dendro application damage. So yeah, it is really, really good. Super, super good. Dendro reactions, OP. He just makes them really OP. So yeah. And as for his overworld passive talent, when Baiju's in the party, every time you pick up a uh, harvestable item, aka flowers or berries or mints, um, basically anything that's a plant, you're basically able to get 2.5% of max HP or Baiju's max HP as healing. So yeah, it's pretty good, especially if you are um, exploring in the overworld um, because the Hida also counts for this too because you are picking up um, harvestable items. So yeah, you can just combine this with the Hida Baiju to basically heal yourself by picking stuff up from the ground. So yeah, it's pretty uh, cool um, passive talent. So yeah. And as for his constellations, his constellations are actually pretty good, to be honest. So yeah, his C1 attentive observation basically gives him an extra charge on universal diagnosis. So basically more healing and more particles. So yeah, as for constellation 2, instant or incisive um, discriminant. Basically, uh, your own active character um, hits a nearby opponent. You basically in unleash a uh, gossamer sprite splice. Um, and it will basically initiate one attack before returning, dealing 250% of Baiju's attack as dendro damage and healing for 20% of Universal Diagnosis's uh, Gossamer Sprite's normal healing. So basically, when you use his E, you're basically able to do 250% more um, attack as dendro damage and also heal for 20%, which is pretty cool. But um, he does still need max HP, so the attack is okay, I guess. But... Um, mainly focus on max hp but the 20 percent healing for universal diagnosis is really cool so yeah um definitely the healing is pretty worth it as for his constellation three we have all aspects stabilized which basically increases holistic uh revivification by three levels which is his q so pretty cool for his constellation four we have ancient art of uh perception which basically, after 15 seconds of his Q is used, Baiju will increase all nearby party members' elemental mastery by 80. So basically, after his Q is used up, you get a flat 80 elemental mastery, which is pretty cool because, well, more element or elemental mastery, which means more um, reaction damage. So pretty cool. As for Constellation 5, the hidden ebb and flow increases his E by 3 levels, which is pretty cool as well. And his Constellation 6, which is pretty broken, to be honest. So, it increases the damage dealt by his Q by 8% on max HP, which is pretty good because he does have a lot of max HP. Um, additionally, when 
uh, Gossamer Sprite, which is basically the attack that uh, Cheng Cheng does when you use E, um, there is a 100% chance of uh, generating one of Holistic Revivification Seamless Shields. So yeah, it is really good. So basically, when you use Q and then E, you basically get your Q back. So basically, infinite shield. Yeah. And keep in mind, this is C6. So basically, you get this, which basically gives you two Sheng Chengs that to work with. So yeah, it's pretty good. So yeah, this cements him as probably one of the best dungeon healers in the entire game because he basically gives you shields and heals. So yeah, what more could be said? And as for my final verdict and my final thoughts, Baiju is just way too good. He's literally the best dungeon um, healer in the game. So um, since his banner is out right now, um, which I will showcase here, he is definitely a must pull, um, especially if you are going to be using um, Baiju in the future. And also if you are going to be uh, using dungeon teams in the future um, as uh, time goes by um, from harder modes of the game. Uh, Baiju is definitely worth it. He's really great on Spiral Abyss. He's really great on bosses. He's just really good in Dendro, or in um, general, because he basically gives you Dendro healing. He gives you Dendro application. He gives you shields. He gives you basically everything that a Dendro supporter needs. And what more do you want? <laughs> he basically gives you damage buffs as well. So yeah, damage buffs, healing, shield, Dendro application. What more could you ask for? So yeah. Well, anyways, there is Baiju. Pretty, pretty good dungeon character. One of the best dungeon characters in the game. Um, and also the best dungeon healer in the game. So yeah. Well, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that showcase video. So if you do enjoy this Baiju showcase video, be sure to leave a like down below. And if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And also turn on the notification bell to not miss on a single upload that I do. I upload Genshin videos once a week. So, yeah. And also, if you do like and subscribe, um, thank you guys for the support. Um, a lot of support is greatly appreciated. It basically helps me fuel my passion to make these Genshin videos. So, again, leaving a like and subscribing is really greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for the support. It really means a lot to me. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here. So, yeah. Thank you so much. And also, comment down below, what do you think of Baiju? You think he's OP? You think he's not? Are you going to be summoning for him now? Um, after, well, the video? Or are you not gonna be summoning because of reasons? Or because of primos? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Baiju Showcase video. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.